So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another mechanical video. In this video, I'm actually gonna be doing a distributor on a 2004 Nissan Xterra with a 3.3 liter engine. Now the reason I'm replacing the distributor is I had a clattering noise coming right from the distributor or what I thought was the distributor. I did replace the distributor and I went ahead and did spark plugs and spark plug wires, as well as I'm gonna show you how to replace the rotor and distributor cap if that's all you're doing. Now, if you are replacing the distributor, you also need a timing light to check the timing after the replacement. I'm gonna go over how a timing light works and how to check it on this engine as well. Here is a chapter index, guys, of what takes place in this video and at what time they happen. So if you don't need to watch the entire video, you can bypass what you don't need to see so I don't waste your time. And let's get to it. So right here, I'm gonna let you listen to that noise that I had coming from the top of my engine. Now just by the noise, I could tell it was coming from the top of the engine somewhere. So the easiest way to diagnose where a noise is coming from is just to grab a solid piece of metal. Right here, I'm just using a heel bar. I move the one end of the heel bar around on various things on top of the engine and then put the other side right to my ear and that will resonate that noise up in so you can hear it. You don't wanna use anything with a plastic handle because that will muffle out the noise so you can't hear it as well. So right here when I put the heel bar on the distributor was actually the loudest I had ever heard that noise and that's why I was almost positive it was going to be the distributor. And since I was almost positive at the time, this is the distributor I ended up getting off Amazon. And since I was there, I decided to go ahead and do plugs and spark plug wires. So the first thing I always like to do when doing spark plug wires is go ahead and number the plug wires on the distributor cap so I know the exact order and where they go. I usually also put that number on the spark plug wires themselves. However, these still had the factory wires and they were numbered already, so I didn't have to do that. This basically just helps you keep track. So when you're putting the new ones on, you know exactly where they're going, especially if you're planning on reusing the distributor cap, you know what length wire goes to what location. Once labeling all the spark plug wires with where they went on the distributor cap, I went ahead and removed the two screws that were holding the distributor cap to the distributor. And this was a Phillips screwdriver to remove them. Then I went ahead and pulled the spark plug wires off of the plugs themselves. Because these were so old and they were the original, I had to use a pair of long needle nose and leverage against the intake manifold or the valve cover to get some of these to pop loose. This is also why if this is this old of a vehicle and they look like the originals, you might also wanna do plug wires and not just spark plugs because I did end up damaging a couple of them trying to get them off. You could also get a spark plug wire removal tool on Amazon for pretty cheap to assist with this. Now a common misconception when doing a distributor is that you have to put it, the engine at TDC number one in order to pull it out. That is completely untrue. The rotor in the distributor is only gonna go around one time to fire all six cylinders. And therefore, as long as you make some timing marks, which is what I'm doing here, and make sure that when you install the new distributor, that rotor is in the exact same place. That's all you have to do. And I will explain more of that when we go back together. So right here, you can see I marked the rotor to the intake manifold and then the rotor to the distributor itself. The most critical thing to doing these marks is making sure you can identify where the rotor is in comparison to the engine. After that, I unplugged the main harness from the distributor, and there was also a two-wire harness that I needed to unplug as well. Both of these connection points fought me pretty good because they're so old and brittle. On the two-wire pigtail, I actually ended up using my multi-purpose tool to cut out a little bit of the outer housing to make it so I could leverage it off with a screwdriver. Both of these pigtails just have a little tab that you're supposed to be able to push down to unclip them and release them so you can pull them apart. However, this clip actually looks like you just need to take a pick or a small screwdriver and lift up on this side of it to unclip it off of the other harness. Next, I went ahead and removed the single bolt that holds the distributor itself to the engine block. Now this has a little bit of a goofy angle, but you should, if you use a six point socket, be able to just use an extension and break it free. There's also a Phillips that you can use to finish loosening it up. And I recommend grabbing a magnet in order to pull it out of there so you don't drop it down in the engine valley. 
Then I went ahead and got my new distributor and pulled the cap off of it so I could verify that everything looks the same before going any further. Once I had the new distributor cap off and everything looked the same, I went ahead and timed the rotor so it was in the exact same position as the old rotor was in the old distributor before I pulled it out of the engine. And all you have to do is rotate the gear at the bottom of the distributor in order to do this. And apparently I decided to add one more timing mark. I believe I marked where the pigtail was going into the distributor on this little tube right underneath it to give me one extra timing mark to make sure I knew exactly where to put the distributor back into. Then I went ahead and pulled up on the distributor and pulled it out of the engine. If the top of the engine is really dirty, you also wanna take a blow gun or a can of brake clean and maybe wash that off where the distributor goes into the engine block so you don't possibly dump material into your engine as you pull that out. Then I put the distributors right next to each other, side to side, upside down and around backwards to make sure they are identical before placing the new distributor in the engine. So here is a good look of where that distributor sits in the valley of the engine. And basically there is a gear ran off the camshaft that drives that distributor. So right here, I am putting the new distributor in place. The rotor will rotate counterclockwise as you set it into place. So if you end up being off, all you have to do is lift it up, move the rotor a little bit, and then set it back down into place until you are exactly where the old one was before taking it out. So right there you can see as we were putting it in, the rotor was spinning this way, so we're a tooth off. Make sure when putting the distributor in by hand that it goes fully down to the engine block. Do not use the bolt to pull it into position. The rotor is going to move quite a bit of distance if you are a tooth off, so you don't really have to worry about being one tooth off and not being able to tell. So keep in mind you also have to do a timing adjustment, so there is a little bit of play side to side with the distributor itself to help correct the timing if it looks a little bit off. The rotor was lined up good with the mark that I had made on the intake manifold. It just seemed a little bit off with the marks that I had made on the distributor itself. However, after moving the rotor one tooth either direction and realizing that put me way off from my mark on the intake manifold, I realized that that little bit of difference from the rotor to the distributor itself was just something that I was gonna to have to correct when doing the final timing adjustment. The key to this is making sure the rotor is in the exact same location as what the old one was before pulling it out. Once again, I used my magnet to set that bolt into place and held it with a screwdriver to pull the magnet off of it so I did not lose that bolt in the engine valley. Then I went ahead and started that bolt using a Phillips screwdriver. You are going at an angle, so make sure you do not cross thread this bolt as you start it. And you don't want to tighten this bolt down all the way because you will have to make the timing adjustment. So you just want to get it started. Then I went ahead and plugged in my two wire pigtail and the main pigtail that plugs into the base of the distributor itself. Then I went ahead and put my new spark plug wires on the new distributor cap. I just put the old distributor cap and wire set next to the new one and matched the wires up one by one and put them on the cap. When pushing the wires on the cap, you should almost feel like a detent when they're fully in position. It might take some decent amount of force to pop them all the way on. Next, I went ahead and gapped all my spark plugs. Now this is my favorite spark plug gapping tool. The correct gap was 44 thousandths. This tool has a taper all the way around it, so you just put the spark plug over the tool, bend it a little bit until you get to that 44 thousandths mark. And I did this for all six plugs. After gapping my plugs, I went ahead and took my air compressor and blew out the spark plug holes so no debris would fall into the engine when pulling them out or putting the new ones back in. As far as replacing the spark plug, guys, it's pretty self-explanatory. On this engine, you will need some extensions to get in there. The three on the passenger side are really easy to get to. The three more towards the center of the engine the first two aren't bad as long as you have some long extensions. The one at the back of the firewall is an absolute pain in the ass. If you do want to use a torque wrench to torque these down, I did not have one at the time I was doing this job. The torque spec is 14 to 22 foot pounds. When you are replacing these, you're definitely going to want to have a spark plug socket that holds these spark plugs while you put them in and out. 
right here I'm just blowing out the area where the ones towards the center of the engine go again to make sure no debris falls in the engine when I'm doing these. You'll notice the long extensions I was using because you have to go through the intake manifold in order to reach the spark plugs on the driver's side of the engine. Right here I'm actually doing the first one on that driver's side and I had to use a pretty long extension to get that one. This is the second one on the driver's side. Once again, you start getting close to the firewall when you're doing this one. However, the last one right towards the firewall probably took me as much time to do that one spark plug as it did for the other five in total. Granted, I did not watch a YouTube video before doing it. And if I would have, it might have let me know that this is the length of the extension and socket that you're going to want to have in order to remove this last spark plug. Now, even knowing that, it's still an absolute pain in the ass to do this one because you can't get much rotation out of the ratchet when you're breaking it loose. Now, once you do get it broken loose, you might be able to add another swivel and another extension so you can get more rotation out of it. I did not have those at the time of doing this project, but it might be something to consider. This is the final torque that I'm putting on that last spark plug. Sorry I didn't get better footage, but there was two problems with that. One is I was cussing every two seconds, and the other is I was basically laying on completely on top of the engine for most of it, so you couldn't see anything anyways. So if you're not planning on doing the distributor and you're just doing a cap rotor plug wires and plugs, the rotor just has a single bolt that holds it in. So all you do is break that loose and take it out and then you can remove the rotor, put the new rotor in place and then tighten that bolt back down. And obviously you can do this with the distributor in the engine. If that bolt is not in a good place where you can get a Phillips screwdriver on it, just bump the engine over little by little until it is in a good place where you can loosen that bolt and put it back on. After that 20 minutes of my life that I'll never get back from that one stupid spark plug, I went ahead and grabbed the new distributor cap and plug wires, set it on top of the distributor, and tightened the two screws that hold it in place with my Phillips screwdriver. Then I went ahead and ran my spark plug wires one by one and put them in place. Make sure you feel that detent. You should also hear almost like a clicking sound when you get these spark plug wires on all the way. This is where labeling your wires on the old distributor cap can help you know which one goes to which location. Another good practice to get into if you don't do this stuff very often is to take a picture or take a video so you have that as a reference guide when you're going back together as well. Something as simple as that can help you route your spark plug wires in the same manner they were ran before. These spark plug wires were a very tight fit on the spark plug getting that detent to go and I had to put a pretty good amount of force on these to make sure they were on all the way. The ones towards the middle of the engine where the manifold is did have a guide pin that those spark plugs had to line up with to help make sure they were in properly. And once again this back spark plug on the driver's side was an absolute pain in the ass to get to and it was hard to get the leverage to make sure that it was popped on all the way to the spark plug. After that, all that's left to do is check the timing. Here is the actual procedure for doing that if you wanna read through that real quick. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire the engine up, make sure everything sounds okay, then rev it either with the foot throttle or you can go and do the hand throttle right by the intake to two to 3,000 RPMs a handful of times. Then we're gonna shut it off and go and disconnect the throttle position sensor. Once again, like most pigtails, this will have a little tab that you need to depress in order to pull that pigtail off of the sensor. Then you will need to find a timing light. Now these are getting harder and harder to find. I actually tried renting one from a couple auto parts stores and they didn't have them. A friend of mine actually had one and I was able to borrow it, so I appreciate that. This one does have the timing adjustment on the back side, and I'll explain that. And I will also explain how to do it if it does not have that adjustment on it. So we're going to take the clamp and put it over the number one cylinder spark plug wire, and then we're going to go ahead and hook up the positive and negative power cables to the battery. Okay, now that we've got everything hooked up, we're going to go ahead and start it up again and rev it up two or three times to two to three thousand RPM and then we're gonna go ahead and return it to idle 
and check our timing. Before checking that timing with the timing light, make sure that that engine has come completely back to a low idle and is not sitting at a high idle for whatever reason. Now as far as what you're looking for when doing this, there's going to be timing marks on the crankshaft pulley on the engine side of it. So right here is the piece of paper that shows you what you're looking for, and right here is the marks on the pulley. Now if you want to, you can take a whiteout pen or a marker and mark either the 10 degree spot if your timing light does not have the adjustment on the back of it, or you can mark zero degrees with that marker if it does have the adjustment on the back of the timing light. By using a paint pen or a whiteout marker, it just makes it easier when you're using the timing light to see the zero or 10 degrees. All right guys, I'm gonna do my best to explain how the timing light's working and what you're looking for. Here is our crankshaft pulley. You're gonna have five notches on the crankshaft pulley, zero, five, 10, 15, and 20 degrees before top dead center. Okay, so right here we've got our piston, our cylinder wall. This is gonna be number one. And what we're setting by doing this is when this spark plug is gonna actually spark and create the combustion in the combustion chamber. So basically our piston's coming up and we want that to ignite 10 degrees before it gets to the very top of its travel. So that's what we're setting here. In order to do that, and basically what this timing light is doing, you're on number one cylinder spark plug wire with the clamp. So every time that that sends that signal, this timing light is flashing a light, obviously very quickly. And what you're checking here is where the engine is at in relationship to when that spark plug gets its signal to fire. So zero timing mark is right at the very top of its travel. Five and then 10 is where they want it. So they want this to ignite 10 degrees before this gets to its very top of travel. So basically every time it gets that signal, it's flashing a light and that's what you're looking at on the crankshaft pulley. So right here, I've got the timing light set to 10 degrees. So that means I'm looking for the mark that I made on the zero degree. And here is a good view of the pointer on the engine going right to that mark on the crankshaft pulley. Now, if you were off, all you would do is while the engine is running, slowly rotate the distributor clockwise or counterclockwise to make that timing mark line up with the pointer on the engine. So right now we're reading at like three degrees. And if I move this back, now we're back at zero. Once you've got your timing set correctly, then all you have to do is go ahead and finish snugging that bolt down with a socket. Once you tighten that down, I do recommend checking it one more time just to make sure nothing shifted when you tighten that bolt down. Once you did a final check to make sure you're good one more time, then all you have to do is go ahead and plug in your throttle position sensor pigtail back into the sensor. And that's all there is to it, guys. So unfortunately for me, the whole point of me doing this distributor was trying to fix a clattering problem that I had. I drove it around for a couple weeks and unfortunately it came back. So I don't think I've fixed the problem. So there's a good possibility of me doing a video on a timing belt in the near future or possibly something else depending on what I find. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.